Welcome to this revision blast for AQ8 GCSE Geography. Today we're focusing on coastal landscapes, which is part of paper one. We're going to kick off proceedings today with a quick game of Can You Crack the Code? On the screen you have six statements and they are all statements that describe what happens to a wave as it reaches the shore. However, they are not in the correct order. So your job is to try and work out the code to put those back into the correct order. We have the wave begins to break, circular motion in open water, backwash runs back down the beach, motion becomes elliptical in shape, the swash runs up the beach and friction with seabed distorts his motion. So we're going to give you a moment to decide what order you think they should go in. You may wish to pause the video to give yourself a little bit more time and you might want a pen and paper with you just so you can note down the order of the letters. Good luck. If you haven't paused the video already, then please do so to give yourself a little bit more time because we are about to reveal the correct order. Right, let's see what that code is. Okay, so our code is B F D A E C. Well done if you've got that correct. So we start off with a circular motion in open water. Friction with the seabed distorts this motion and the motion becomes elliptical in shape. The waves then begin to break, the swash runs up the beach and the backwash runs back down the beach. Again, if you got those correct, well done. Now keeping along with the theme of waves, we now have on the screen eight different characteristics of waves. You are going to have 60 seconds in this categorised activity to sort the key phrases into either constructive waves or destructive waves. So remember, constructive waves build up the beach, destructive waves destroy it. Let's start our minute now. Hopefully you've managed to get those into the correct category. So let's have a look at the answers. So our constructive waves have a long wavelength. They have a low wave height. They have a strong swash, which enables them to build the beach up and they carry and deposit sand and pebbles. In comparison, our destructive waves have a short wavelength. The wave height is over one meter. They have a strong backwash and they remove sand and pebbles from the beach. They can do quite a lot of damage. Okay, we're gonna move on to a give me four activity. We are going to run this activity twice. You have 30 seconds to give me four coastal er landforms created by erosion. Let's go. Okay, how did you get on? So did you manage to come up with four coastal landforms created by the process of erosion? Let's have a look at what you could have said. We've got headlands, arches, wave cut platforms and stacks. You could have also had stumps, you could have had caves, you could have had cliffs themselves, you could have had bays. Um, and remember, 
In paper one, you are likely to be asked a four marker or a six marker about how a coastal landform is created. It's really important to know your processes and we're going to have a look at that in a minute in our next activity. But first we're going to do one more give me four. This time we are after four coastal landforms that are created by the process of deposition. Okay, hopefully again you managed to come up with four, so let's have a look at what you could have written in your list. We've got spits, beaches, bars and sand dunes. You could have also had tombolos there as well. Now the next activity that we're going to do is a activity where we're going to put statements in order to explain how a stump forms. So it's all very well knowing the um, different types of landforms that are caused by erosion and deposition. But like I said a minute ago, it is really important to know your process as well. So this activity is going to test your sequencing still skills, but it also contains some specific processes. So in those four and six mark answers, you need to make sure that you're not just writing the term erosion. You need to be specific about what process actually is happening. So we're going to give you a moment to think about those statements. Have a read through. So we've got a stack is left behind. The roof of the arch is weathered and collapses. Abrasion and hydraulic action means a crack gets bigger and becomes a cave. A headland has a crack in it. Wave erosion deepens a cave until it cuts through the headland and forms an arch. And over time, the stack is eroded and forms a stump. So we're going to give you possibly 20 seconds or so. If you need a bit longer, then please pause the video to note down um, on a piece of paper the order that they go down in. So just write down the numbers. Don't write the whole sentences. OK, off you go. We're about to reveal the answer, so if you need a little bit more time, then just pause the video now. Right, let's see the correct order. Okay, hopefully you got this correct. So we've got a headland has a crack in it. Abrasion and hydraulic action means that the crack gets bigger and becomes a cave. So if you note there, we've actually used specific processes of erosion. The wave erosion deepens a cave until it cuts through the headland and forms an arch. The roof of the arch is weathered and collapses. A stack is left behind and over time the stack is eroded and forms a stump. So if you got those in the right order, then well done. Our next activity follows a similar thread. This time we are looking at mend the gap. So we've got some text. The text is going to answer the question, how do bays and headlands form? But there are some missing words. So you need to work out what those missing words are. So let's have a look at the piece of text. Bays and something form where there are alternating bands of more and less something rock along a coastline. The less resistant rock will erode more and form bays. The more resistant rock will erode less rapidly and form headlands. However, over time, refraction will mean that the wave, something, becomes concentrated on the headland, increasing the rate of something. Now, our third missing word should all be on one line. OK, now if we have a look carefully, the, the number of dashes represents the number of letters in each missing word. So the one at the end of the second line has seven letters so it should be on one line for some reason the formatting has spread it across both so let's have a think about what should go where we're going to give you a few moments again have a think about which key terms are missing you might want to pause the video to give yourself a little bit more time
I'm about to reveal the answer. So if you need a bit more time, then pause the video. But let's have a look at what keywords are missing. So we have bays and headlands for whether our alternating bands are more and less resistant rock along a coastline. The less resistant rock will erode more rapidly and form bays. The more resistant rock will erode less rapidly and form headlands. However, over time, refraction will mean that the wave energy becomes concentrated on the headland, increasing the rate of erosion. Right, we're going to do it again. This time, the text is explaining how wave cut platforms form. And we again are looking for the missing words or phrases. When waves hit a cliff, they erode it through something, action and abrasion. The part of the cliff reached by these waves will be eroded to form a wave cut something. Eventually, the rocks above the notch will, and the cliff will, move back. The base of the something which is left behind is called the wave cut platform. So fairly straightforward. Once again, we'll give you a few moments to have a think, think about what's missing what key terms or key processes are not there. And if you need a bit more time, pause the video. If you haven't paused the video and you need a bit more time, please pause it now because we are about to reveal the answers. Right, let's see what those missing terms are. So when waves hit a cliff, they erode it through hydraulic action and abrasion. The part of the cliff reached by these waves will be eroded to form a wave cut notch. Eventually, the rocks above the notch will collapse and the cliff will retreat or move back. The base of the cliff, which is left behind, is called the wave cut platform. So if you manage to get all five of those correct, then well done. I'm going to move on to altered vowels. So each of the key phrases or key terms shown have had the vowel changed to an alternative one. Can you work out the key phrases? Now remember, these are not anagrams. They simply have had their, vow their vowels swapped over. So our first one is on the screen now. It looks very strange. Remember, it's not an anagram. Can you work out what key term this is? So a process happening at the coast. Right, let's reveal. It is chemical weathering. So a good example of this would be acid rain. Okay, let's have a look at our next one. A little bit easier, this one. So just give you a moment. You've only got two letters here that are incorrect. So it should be quite easy. This one is slumping, which is a form of mass movement, okay, and happens when your cliffs get waterlogged, particularly vulnerable are clay cliffs. Right, this one is quite tricky, but it does have, it's really important, it has a massive impact on how that coastline shapes on the type of landforms that you might find um, there as well. Okay, you might want to pause this one if you need a bit more time to try and work it out because we are about to reveal. Let's have a look what it is. It is the geological structure. So the geological structure is the different types of rocks found in those coastlines um, and whether they are discordant or concordant. So whether the rocks all line up, for example. Um, and obviously they ha it has a huge impact on the rate of erosion, but also the types of landforms that you will find. So bays and headlands we've already talked about are formed because of those alternating bands of rock. Our next one is currently on the screen. So a little bit easier, perhaps. Although this one's got lots of vowels, so it does look very different. But it is an important process. Okay, let's reveal. It is deposition. And we've already just discussed some of those landforms that are caused by deposition. 
Right, let's have a look at our final altered vowels. A little bit easier again. Okay, let's reveal. Hopefully you have all worked this one out. It is coastal management. Excellent. Well done if you got all five correct. So we're going to move on to a picture grid activity this time. You're going to see six questions. As each question is answered, sections of an image will be revealed and you've got to try and work out what that image is. So let's have a look at these questions. What image is behind the grid is what we're trying to establish. So question one, what is the term for the weakening and breaking up of rocks in their original place? So we're going to leave that question on the screen for a few moments. Hopefully you know this one. Let's have a look at the answer. It is weathering. So the idea about the weakening and breaking up of rocks in situ is weathering. So let's see if what we can see here. Okay, so we've got um, some bits of wood. We've got some mesh. Looks a bit like a pipe. Right, what is another word for mechanical weathering? So again, we're gonna leave this up for a moment. What's another word for mechanical weathering? Let's reveal. It is also known as physical weathering. So you've got things like um, onion skin weathering, you've got freeze thaw weathering. Okay, these are types of mechanical weathering. Okay, let's have a look at the image. All right. Why does rainwater slowly dissolve limestone? So what's the answer to this one here? Why does rainwater slowly dissolve limestone? I'm leave that up for a moment for you to think about. Hopefully you've got a bit of an idea of what the answer is here. Let's reveal the answer. It is because it is acidic. It is a really weak acid. It's a type of chemical weathering taking place. So let's see a bit more of the picture. Why does vegetation on a cliff lead to biological weathering? So still talking about weathering here. Why does vegetation on a cliff lead to biological weathering? If you need a little bit more time for this one, you may pause the video because we are about to reveal the answer. It is the roots grow into cracks. So well done if you got that one correct. Let's look at our next question. What's a term for the downward movement of material because of gravity? So what is a term for downward movement of material because of gravity? Again, we'll leave it up for a moment. Give you a little bit of time to process that question. Right, what do we think? Let's have a look. It is mass movement. Okay, and there are lots of different types. So you can have slumping, rock fall, for example. Let's do our last question. What term is used when a block of rock slides down a cliff? Okay, so this is a type of mass movement, but what's it called? Okay, let's have a look. It's called a landslide. So we should get our full picture here. So what is the image behind this grid? So what's the picture on the screen actually showing us? Let's have a look. It is showing us cliff collapse. Okay, so you can see parts of the cliff has disappeared. You've got bare bits on the cliff. You have got vegetation. The cliff is made out of sandstone here. And there's lots of weathering taking place there. And at the top, you can see something's been put in place to keep people away from the cliff edge, um, to block it off slightly, and obviously to try and stabilise it. Right, well done. So we're now going to move on to a game of missing vowels. These missing vowels are all different types of coastal management. Okay, so on the screen, we've got our first one. It's a term that you are probably familiar with, particularly the second and the third word. Unfortunately, it's very difficult because the vowels have been removed. So what is this key term? Remember, these are all types of coastal defence. 
let's reveal this one. It is a recurved sea wall. So it's designed to stop flooding, to act as a barrier to the waves. And the recurved nature of the sea wall means that the waves are reflected back onto the beach. So they are very, um, very strong. They're made of concrete. They are a good way of keeping buildings and other properties, so, you know, all sorts of property behind it, really safe. But the recurved shape does mean that the beach can be damaged by the reflected sea wave. Right, next one. What do we think? So these are really common, often found with sea walls. Let's have a look what it is. It is wooden groin. So groins are designed to stop the effects of longshore drift. So they're designed to hold the sand in place. They can either be wooden, they can be uh, concrete. You also see them sometimes made of uh, big like rock boulders. And the idea here is that they keep the beach in place. They have in the neighbor a wide beach to stabilize, which slows down the rate of erosion and is also good for tourism. Next one. So first word, quite easy. Second word, possibly not so much. Right, let's have a look. It is rock armour. So these are big boulders that are placed at the bottom of a seawall or at the bottom of a cliff. Bot bottom of the seawall, sometimes they're just to um, protect and stabilise that seawall. Place at the bottom of a cliff to try and again slow down the rate of erosion. So the idea here is that the water will go between the gaps of the rock and it will slow down so the energy is dissipated. So by the time it reaches the cliff base, there's not much energy left at all. Um, it does the same job as though as Gabby in cages that you might have seen, which are metal cages full of smaller rocks that are placed at the cliff base. Right, number four. So, so far we have looked at three methods of hard engineering. We are now looking at a method of soft engineering. So the idea of working with nature here. Let's reveal this one. It is dune stabilisation. So the idea of stabilising sand dunes, so they act as a natural barrier to the sea. And our last one. Let's give you a moment to work this one out. This one is looks fairly easy, but obviously it's only easy if you know the term in the first place. It is a beach nourishment. What happens here is uh, where beach material, so pebbles or sand, depending on what the natural beach is, um, are added to the beach to build it up to try and decrease the rate of erosion. Um, this is often done by a sort of a, a dredger out to sea, which is collecting material from the sea floor and then bringing it up onto the beach. And then you will quite often see diggers and other machinery putting it into, into place. It is a reasonably cheap solution compared to other sea defences. However, it does have to be done regularly and it really only works if there are other sea defences in place. So for example, if there are groins there holding that sand in place. Okay, let's move on. So we're gonna do an on balance activity then. So we talked about coastal engineering. And we mentioned hard engineering. Hard engineering is really controversial. Okay, lots of places at the coast are not protected by hard engineering anymore. Lots of those old and sort of remnants of coastal um, management from perhaps the 1950s are starting to fall into disrepair and they haven't been maintained or they're not going to be replaced. So lots of people get very cross about uh, the idea of coastal management. Lots of people are losing their homes because where they live is not adequately protected. So firstly, we want to think about two advantages of hard coastal engineering. So those methods such as seawalls, groins, rock armour, gabby and cages. So building structures. Give me two advantages. So you might want to pause the video here while you note these down, because in a moment we are going to reveal these to you. Okay, if you've not paused the video already, do so now. So two advantages of hard coastal engineering are, it provides a barrier to coastal erosion or flooding and people feel safer. So we quite often see um, images on the news of people who are 
trying to protect their properties. Um, they might be building their own coastal defences, for example, or they might be talking about how the fact that they're having to move out, they can't sell their property because nobody wants to buy a house which is about to fall over the cliff. So people will feel a lot safer if there is hard coastal engineering in place. So let's now have a think about the disadvantages of hard coastal engineering. Again, I'll give you a few moments. You might need to pause the video, but I will warn you when we're about to reveal the answer. So what are the arguments against hard coastal engineering? So I mentioned before that originally lots of the coastline around the UK was defended. Lots of those uh, defences have now been fallen into disrepair and they are not being replaced. So what would be the argument against that? OK, if you haven't paused already and you need a bit more time, then please pause the video now because I'm about to reveal the answers to you. So let's have a look at two disadvantages of hard coastal engineering. So firstly, it causes all sorts of damage to coastal habitats. And secondly, changes to erosion and transportation affect other parts of the coastline. So if you have a number of groins in one area and then suddenly that stops, then the areas that are not being protected by groins are starved of sediment because they are all being kept in one place. The other bigger argument, which is possibly more obvious, and lots of you will have written that one down, is the fact that coastal engineering is unbelievably expensive. So therefore, there are local councils will only be able to justify it where there is an economic need. So for example, farmland might not be defended, personal houses perhaps won't be, but somewhere like a touristy town would be defended. Okay, let's move on. So we're going to do some multiple choice questions now. So the more eagle-eyed viewers here will notice that we are actually missing question one. I'm not really sure what's happened to that. So we're going to just crack on and move on to question two. So we've got nine multiple choice questions rather than the 10 that I thought we had. So our second question or question two is what is causing these waves to break? Is it A, the wind blowing hard, B, contact with the seabed, C, the water breaking down, or is it D, human activity? So I'm just going to give you a moment to work out the answer there. Okay, let's have a look. It is contact with the seabed, so friction is causing the, the waves to break. Question three, what landforms can be seen in the background of this picture? Is it A, wave cut platforms, B, bays, C, headlands, D, arches and stacks? It's going to give you a moment to have a proper look at that photo. OK, let's go. It is headland, so you can see those stretching out in the back. Question four, what is this landform called? Is it a headland, a stack, an arch or a stump? Let's reveal the answer. It is a stack and obviously at some point it would have been joined to a headland and it would have formed part of an arch which has collapsed and over time it will eventually end up as a stump. Number five, what process has happened here? Is it sliding, attrition, rock fall or slumping? So look carefully at the picture. Let's reveal the answer. It is rockfall. So you can see some great big bits of rock at the bottom of that photograph, just behind the barriers. Question six, what causes the pebbles on this beach to move from west to east? Is it attrition, longshore drift, hydraulic action, or is it deposition? Let's reveal the answer. It is longshore drift. So hopefully you remember the idea of the zigzag motion, the swash coming up at the beach at sort of a generally a 45 degree angle and the backwash returning at a 90 degree angle. Number seven, what has caused this pebble to split? Is it abrasion, attrition, hydraulic action or is it solution? 
So all forms of erosion there, but which one is relevant to this picture? Let's reveal the answer. It is attrition. So this has happened because the rocks are knocking together. Eight, what method of coastal defence can you see here? Is it a seawall? Is it a groin? Is it rock armour? Or have we got dune regeneration taking place? Let's reveal the answer. It is a groin. And obviously we have just spoken about those. Nine, what could be causing this cliff instability? Is it deposition, transportation, erosion or longshore drift? Okay, let's have a look. It is erosion, okay, which will cause undercutting at the bottom, meaning that the rest of the cliff is unstable uh, with nothing holding it up. Right, uh, number 10. How does this coastal defence protect the coastline? It makes waves smaller, it builds up the beach, retreat is managed, it's a barrier and it dissipates wave energy. Let's have a look at the answer. It is D, well done. Right, we have one more activity to go, which is the cube. So you're going to be shown a puzzle cube. The individual squares show phrases relating to three different topics, but the phrases have been mixed up. Your task is to work out what the three topics are and then for you to list the nine titles that apply to each topic. So you're going to need to have a pen and paper at the ready for this one. So there are three topic areas contained on the cube. Can you work them out and what they are? You've got three minutes to work them out and sort each phrase into the correct topic. And that starts from now. So you can see the timer on the board. You have 27 key terms. And they need to go into three groups. You have got two minutes left. Right, you are down to your last minute. Hopefully by now you've worked out some of the connections. It is tricky though. Right, your final 30 seconds. Okay. 
Okay, five, four, three, two, one. Right, let's see how you got on. So we have coastal management, we've got landform, and we've got processes. Okay, so we have a quick look. Landforms, we've got headland, bay, cave, cliff, wave cut platform, stack, beach, sand dune, and spit. Coastal management, we've got seawall, groins, rock armour, gabions, uh, coastal realignment, beach nourishment, dune regeneration, beach reprofiling and managed retreat. And in terms of processes, longshore drift, deposition, erosion, attrition, abrasion, transportation, traction, saltation, and suspension. If you got those all correct, amazing work. If you got just some of them correct, that's also very impressive. So well done for making it to the end of our revision blast for coastal landscapes. Remember, this is part of the physical landscapes of the UK unit, which is part of paper one you study two optional units. So if you've studied uh, rivers or glaciation, then please have a look at the videos that go with those. And remember, they are revision blast videos for every topic across the two papers. All of the physical paper one topics are already in place in the playlist. If the paper two ones are not there just yet, they will be very shortly. So do come back and check. And it just goes without saying, um, just to wish you good luck. So good luck.